Hi, Billy. How you doing? I'm good, man. Good nice man. to see you again. Yeah. Great to be here. This fun, this interview is for NoiseEyes.com. Yep, I know. It's a uh, local. I know you guys. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, well, let's start with the interview. It's been like uh, 20 years since uh, yeah, the move address. Yeah. Do you feel like it's been... How, how long? 20 years? Oh, it's in 30 years. No, no, like 20. <laughs> 20, even 20 years. 20 years, yeah. It feels like yesterday. Yeah? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Is there any chance for you to play this album in its entirety? One way or another? It's a great idea. Yeah? Maybe. It's a good idea. But not on this tour? No. No. no like it? As a headliner or Only when we like play Croatia. All right. Great. I remember that. <laughs> right. Hey, so it's going to be in two months now. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's been two years since uh, Reborn in the Fires yeah. album. You're working on new material. Yeah. What's new? What can you tell me about it? <clears throat> a little bit deeper. You've been touring a lot with uh, it, it, supporting the album in yeah, Europe, around tough. the world. It's tough to talk about a record before you release the record. Okay. You know, we're writing, you know, sharing ideas, jamming on new stuff. But until the record is done, you don't know what's going to be on the record. You know? I remember on the last record, there's a song called uh, a song called Reborn. It was a song that we weren't going to put on the record. And now it's a song that we play live. You know? It's one of the few songs that we play live. Um, sometimes you're working on something and you're so focused and you think it's... it's Awesome, and then all of a sudden something just quickly comes along. I remember when we were doing State of the World, just we had a lot of the record written, and I, I'm sitting downstairs in my in my basement in Brooklyn. Evan, uh, Evan comes pick me up, and I'm like, oh, check this song. I got this song idea. And I start singing for him. That's pretty cool. I'm like, yeah, I like the riff, I like the groove, and it's pretty cool. And then we worked on the chorus, came with the chorus. But then we just, it was the first chorus, and I showed the guys, and Bobby had this awesome riff. Dun, 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 dun. And we're like, it's a different tempo. Yeah. Feeling is different. So that song was put together at the last minute okay. for that record. Yeah. And you, you never know. How many songs so, do you have finished for the for the new one, for the new album? Finished. That's the thing. Yeah. Okay. Like like I said, I'm, as I'm, you say, like, let's say finished. ideas wise, hundreds. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You have to work it out. I, okay. I, not hundreds. There's ten. Like, a lot. Like, some of the ideas I've shown the guys, and the ideas I haven't shown them. Some of the ideas Danny showed us his ideas, Bobby showed us his ideas. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of ideas that we haven't we have a chance to show each other either. So there's no, with my eyes, it's like, it's a kind of machine that we just let run. We let it go, not naturally. Yeah. When it's right, when it's done, it's done. Yeah, like a lot of bands can, can work in a different way where they could stop. Okay, cool. And next month, you know, on the 15th, we're going to start record, writing the record for two weeks, and then we we'll record. We don't work like that. It's way more. It's way more natural. Like it just happens. Everything just comes out, and then when enough of the shit comes out, we we'll put it together. We look at it. It's like, all right, that's a big pile of shit. Yeah. Let's fucking record it. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Cool. Uh, as far as I know, you had some uh, issues with Reborn in Defiance, releasing it in the USA. What actually happened? <laughs> <laughs> now the punch. Yeah. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Show me what you learned. <laughs> <laughs> it's been released in Europe. It came out in Europe, okay. luckily. And it was Nuclear released. Blast. Right? Right. Yep, okay. Nuclear Blast. We're still on Nuclear Blast. Great label. And um, we're working on a new record. and we got to put, put that record behind us. Okay. So okay. we're, yeah. we're not, not concerned with it. Play the songs, love the songs, love the record, but we moved past that. We obviously went through shit with Evan, and uh -huh. he quit. So it kind of put a, it was a difficult time for us, but we survived and moved Everything forward. I said, yeah. was so the uh, difference between new material and uh, Reborn Defiance, how do you see it? Like Those riffs you have, those riffs you have, uh, you use, I think that the difference is, you know, like it's more extreme, more hardcore, more more biohazard. Like, you know, you know it's more focused biohazard. Okay. More songs that we can play live. Uh -huh. That's what we all are kind of strive for. Oh, okay. Songs that we don't want to have a record. Songs on the record that sounds great in the record, but there's no way it's going to work live. I like that side of biohazard, but right now we don't want to do that. Cool. So. 
it's heavier, yeah. faster, more aggressive. Can all the rewards for you, lyrics? No. Yep. Yeah. Tons. Uh, all about, about what? <coughs> about what? Yeah. Right like, now they're a little about, bit no, it's a little. <laughs> right now they're about the Ukraine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ukraine and Russia. Russia. <laughs> okay, cool. No, but like it, shit happens all the time. Yeah. Out of like, yeah. around the world, yeah. Yeah. What do you like to play more? Festivals or clubs? Where do you see Biohazard fits most? I don't know. It, it I, is a tough question, but it's yeah. a tough question because there's yeah. elements of both venues that I like to both. You know, because both. You, because you played a lot yeah. metal festivals and you played some festivals that are not really metal, like Nova York or something like that. Yeah. So uh, you're really famous in metal festivals at metal festivals. I think the uh, like the vibe of a small club mm -hmm. is something that you can't you, know, you can't compare it to anything else because you can you it's really what a band is all about. Mm -hmm. On a, on a big stage or big production, it's a different kind of energy, and not every band can can hang on those kind of stages either. You know, but Biohazard, I think, what I like about us is that we can we can do what we do at a small stage in, in front of 200 people, and then take that in front of 200,000 people or or 20,000 people, and still deliver it in a Biohazard way. You know what I mean? And we don't need lights and smoke and explosions to yeah. make it impactful. Yeah. It was, I remember this one show we played a couple years ago. I don't know if you were there, but I think it was in Poland. And every band that we went out before us, even during the day, had like pyro and explosions, all these special effects. <laughs> so I, I got a thing of toilet paper put it on my hand and a lighter. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I walked out and I told the crowd, I said, shh, quiet, calm down. Here's the really important rock and roll pyro moment. And I lit it on fire. And Bobby comes over and says, what are you doing? I'm like, stand back. It's really dangerous. It's pyro. And I let the thing on fire and I just dropped it. And I'm like, pyro. And the crowd went crazy. <laughs> what is it? It's all jokes. Uh -huh. Shit like that is just as impactful uh -huh. and memorable as a. Yeah. You know what I mean? Real pyro. One of the first, you know, punk bands that I liked that weren't punk rock was Kiss. All right, yeah. So, and that, so was, that was the whole thing. It was about yeah. you know, showbiz, rock and roll, and lights and explosions and confetti. Yeah. You know, so that thing it's entertaining in some ways. You know, but for our, what we do, it's more funny and burn it's shit. Right. <laughs> Plus, I always had a pyro on Saturday. I like to burn things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you toured around the world. Very nice. So um, I would like to take to tell uh, to ask you actually about the audience. South America, Europe, USA, but I'm aiming at like uh, richer countries and poorer countries. Is there any is there any difference between them? Because uh, it seems like it's not a hundred percent sure, but poorer countries, the fans are much much more passionate, much more honest. Than the, than the fans in Sweden, or in Germany, or USA, you know? Well, is, is, there any, is there any difference between them? I think... Of your music, of course, but at this point. I mean, not to take anything away, because we've had crazy shows in England, crazy shows in Sweden, you know... Russia, Russia, blah, blah, blah. Russia's... Moscow's rich, mm -hmm. but the rest of the country is not rich. It's a mm -hmm. poor mm -hmm. country. Um, that third world, you know, we've also played China. Um, so I think the people from more economically challenged regions of the world have a lot more bullshit that they deal with every day. So they have a lot of energy that's stored inside and they release it more. But the kid in Chile goes through the same shit that the kid in Stockholm does. You know, he's got his family problems. He's, his father's an alcoholic. His mother's cheating on his father. You know, one thing after another. There's always something. You know, he's got a problem with jobs, struggling. He got his girlfriend's pregnant. He's got to work his ass off to pay for food on the table. There's the struggles that we all go through, and so no matter what, I think our underground music scene gives people gives us an outlet for that energy. Be released in a more positive way. So, Sometimes people, like, for me, 
I had all this anger, all this hatred and this anxiety that I kept inside from my childhood and stuff. And it came out in many different ways. Drug abuse and violence. So that's how I released it. And it took me a long for the drug abuse was easier to get rid to to, yeah. to realize that and to like, okay. Um, and then it was music. I found that I had a better release for that energy writing music and being in biohazard. But the but the anger that took a long time to realize. I said, Why am I always angry? My mom's like, and I realized. And it wasn't until I had kids that I you know, became a father. That's when I started to realize, oh, it's from this, it's from that, you know. So I think that whether you come from a rich country or a poor country, you deal with the same shit. But the people who deal with this, the, the life struggles every single fucking day and don't have money to, you know, to pay for food, let alone a you know, shirt or a ticket to see you, um, they are the ones who can express that and release that pressure a lot easier and a lot quicker, a lot more quickly. So it appears to be more crazy, yeah. you know? Actually, Fan is a fan, no matter where he lives, no matter yeah, where he comes I think, from. I think if people can it, relate to your music on, you know, without borders, in a, in a very similar way. Music, it's timeless and borderless. I think so. No yeah. boundaries. I think so. Yeah. For a so long time, we didn't run. I, <clears throat> I didn't understand what it was that people, like, that our fans liked about us. <clears throat> Because, I mean, you know, we write about things that do had to do with us growing up in New York. Things that we knew about city life, things about New York City, things about us as Americans. Blah blah. blah. And like, how are they going to relate to it? But everybody has the same goes through the same shit. And it wasn't until then I realized, oh, I wasn't the only one who had a fuck. You know, it wasn't just Bobby. It wasn't just Danny or Evan. It was you and, and you and you. So everybody goes through shit, and then when you start to realize that you're not the only person in the you're world, the only one, yeah. you start to become closer to that person that you talk to, your friend, and the band that turned you, you know, for us, what I think was people just became more into the band because they share yeah. what we went through, and they felt more, um, they felt closer to us because it was something they were going through, you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. So Billy. Thank you very much for your time, for your answers. My pleasure. See you inside. Yep. Hopefully we'll see you in Croatia Pula. by the end of July. You will. Yeah. Soon. You know that you're playing Croatia in the end of July? Yes. For the Noise Eyes viewers, last words. What's up, motherfuckers? We're going to get you.